Saudi Arabia's oil minister has said the kingdom could phase out the use of fossil fuels by the middle of the century. Ali Al Naimi's remarks at a Paris conference on business and climate change are rather surprising, considering how important Saudi Arabia's crude oil reserves are to its standing in the world. Joining me to discuss this is Anjali Raval, our oil and gas correspondent. Anjali, it's a very odd thing for him to say. This is the petroleum minister of one of the, the, the world's largest crude oil exporter. Uh, what was he thinking of? I think we have to acknowledge who he was talking to here. Um, this was a, a room full of climate enthusiasts and people who are trying to show that they're doing more um, to make their businesses and their, and their, you know, their countries, respective countries, uh, far more energy efficient and, and all of those things. So I think that's the first thing we have to recognise. The second thing is that you know, there is an intention in Saudi Arabia to become more energy efficient and to diversify its energy usage as well as its economy more broadly away from oil. So there are two things going on. But he also, in the speech, I think he hedged it quite a lot, didn't he? There were lots of caveats there. Yeah, so behind the sort of headline, you know, yes, we are going to, um, you know, phase out fossil fuels and our energy usage by 2050, you know, he did say that this idea that we should try and keep, you know, most of the fossil fuels in this world under the ground is an idea that we should put at the back of our heads because it's just not realistic. Mm. But it, it is interesting that... Um, Saudi Arabia, as you say, has been trying to reduce uh, its consumption of crude oil. I mean, it, it is remarkable how much of the oil that it produces is currently being burned just for power generation in the country. So economists say that uh, Saudi Arabia burns about a quarter of its uh, crude oil production at about which is at about 10 million barrels a day on just its, its own domestic energy needs. And given that the population is around 30 million uh, people, but the energy usage is similar to the UK, which has doubled the population. You know, they are really going to have a huge crisis in in you know years to come. So there is a recognition that they need to move away from from oil just just to keep cool. I mean, just for example, I was in Riyadh a few weeks ago, and I was told by uh, somebody that their apartment building um, doesn't have a mechanism to turn off the air conditioning in, in in individual flats. So there's little things like that that really do need to change. Um, whether it's incredibly inefficient, isn't it, that they should be burning crude oil to keep their air conditioning machines on, isn't it? I mean, what are they trying to do to, um, to sort of address that issue? I think they've realised, particularly in this sort of lower oil price environment, they are burning huge amounts of this resource that they need to make money. You know, 90% of the country's revenues uh, come from from oil sales and therefore they are sort of shifting towards solar they're trying to improve efficiencies when it comes to things like sort of you know um, efficiency targets and when it comes to their new, new cars um, and they are pushing nuclear uh, gas but it's all very slow moving you know mm. these things don't happen very quickly and the, but the, the need the is progress, more urgent and the progress towards solar has actually been very halting hasn't it i mean they made an announcement recently where they sort of pushed back their targets yeah, they are going to push back their targets. And, uh, you know, a part of this is also to do with the fact they are trying to create a more robust renewables industry um, because they realise they do need to invest a lot in this if they are serious about it. Um, but if, you know, if, if we are, if, Na if Mr Naimi is talking about phasing out fossil fuels by 2050, the fact that they are pushing back their renewables targets, I mean, none of this, I mean, the timing doesn't really make sense. Yeah, sure. So there was obviously a lot of scepticism really uh, towards this speech uh, by him. Anjali, thanks very much indeed.